ResaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design, which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results, including robust detailed reports. In this video, we'll take a look at the retaining wall design functionality in ResaCalc. So here in ResaCalc, I have a project started already. I have a few different items in that project, and I'm going to go ahead and to add component, and I'm going to choose to add a new retaining wall. And so when I add a new retaining wall, we've got this uh, new retaining wall that's been added. We see it here as retaining wall number two. And so the first uh, properties that we can see here are the, just the general properties, both the geometry and the properties of the wall and the footing. Before we go ahead and look at that, though, if I'm going to go ahead and look at the settings, we can see that we have a new kind of grouping of codes for concrete foundations. So we could choose those differently than our generic concrete. We can also click on the concrete tab here and see some few other options here for rebar grade, foundation rebar grade, um, how we want to set up our pedestal, and then a coefficient of friction uh, for between the soil and the uh, foundation element. Now, if I go ahead and click OK, I'm going to go back onto this general properties tab, and we can go ahead and start by defining these general properties. So the first thing I'm going to do is define the length of the wall. So let's say that full length of the wall is 15 feet. And this will allow us to actually add point loads at any length along the wall or a line load at the full length of the wall or maybe at halfway through the wall, whatever we want to do. Next, we can uh, kind of play around with the soil heights here. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want a um, toe side soil height here of, let's say, one foot. So that's our passive soil height here, our passive pressure. And we can see that updating graphically automatically. And then on the heel side, let's say, let's keep this six feet here. So that's perfect. Uh, next, we can look at the wall, the height of the wall. So we'll keep that height of the wall at uh, 8 feet and the thickness at 12 inches. I think that's good. We can also set our toe length and our heel length. And so in this case, I'm going to keep this at 3 and 4 feet respectively, and then also keep our footing thickness at 12 inches. Now, in this case, I have a key added, um, but I don't actually want a key. I think a key really is only necessary. You only want to include it when it's absolutely necessary. So I'm going to start without it this time. So I'm going to choose this to be no. So here's my basic geometry for my footing. So now I'm going to go to properties. And in this case, we can choose our wall material. We have both options for concrete and masonry. We also, with concrete, have the ability to batter the wall if we want on either the heel side or the toe side. We also can prop the wall for both a concrete and masonry wall. So just kind of add that pin at the top. We also have some other options here for uh, wall and footing continuity, uh, as well as adding footing dowels. Next, I'm going to go ahead here to the soil tab. And this is where we define all the information for uh, the soil that we're using in this case. So if I wanted to, I could add a surcharge load here. We could also choose an angle and, and have the angle to the backfill here. So if I wanted to add just really quickly a 15 degree angle, we could do that. We also then can choose the lateral earth pressure method, method that we're going to use. So either Rankine or the Coulomb method. <laughs> Finally, we can also choose whether or not we have a saturated soil, so we can add groundwater in that active soil there. It's also important in this particular tab to set our subgrade modulus as well as our uh, allowable bearing pressure. So our subgrade modulus obviously is going to be used as the elastic stiffness of the soil and the foundation together. Now, when we change any of these items in the properties here, again, we're going to see all of these items updated. Now, also, if I go ahead and click on something, let's say click on the uh, K value here, it's automatically selected in our properties. So we can use kind of our properties and our graphical input kind of uh, interactively together. Now the next tab here, I'm going to go ahead and click on re reinforcement. In this case, remember, we're using a concrete wall. Now for a masonry wall, if I go ahead uh, really quickly, I'm just going to switch back here and just show you the options for mason masonry wall. If I switch back to reinforcement here, we can choose the block grouting, fully partially ungrouted, we could do a fully uh, unreinforced wall if we want to, and then choose some options for our bar placement, bar size, uh, minimum, maximum bar spacing, and then our design methods. In this particular example, let's go ahead and take this back to a concrete wall. And we can now set the information for the wall and the footing as well. Let's look at the wall first here. So we can define the uh, rebar at each face or in a single layer, 
how are our bar sizes changing and our, our dimensions, setting our cover interior and exterior. For our horizontal reinforcement, we're gonna set a bar size and then set an explicit uh, spacing. But for our vertical reinforcement, both interior and exterior, we'll set a bar size and then give a minimum and a maximum spacing. And so then the system, uh, RisaCalc, will go ahead and optimize that spacing uh, based on the requirements and the loading of the, uh, on the retaining wall. If we go ahead and look at the footing tab, much of the same here in this case, uh, choosing our location of bars, single layer each face, our cover, longitudinal bars, and then our top and bottom bars, uh, having that minimax spacing as well. And again, everything is available here in the graphics. If we go ahead and click on any one of these graphics, so in this case, I click on the wall here, it's bringing me to that uh, vertical bar reinforcement. If we click on the footing here, it switches tabs, brings me to the bottom bars that I could define. So really easy, really interactive to define there. Now, before we go ahead and run the results, we go ahead and need some loads. So now we can see both a plan view and an elevation view. And so this is where that 15 foot length comes into play because we can apply loads anywhere we want along this wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with some distributed loads. And let's first start with a dead load. So I'll say a vertical dead load. Uh, I'm gonna say that it's uh, 750 pounds a linear foot uh, from the start and the end. And it's applied at the entire 15 foot length of the wall. So we can see that applied here. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add another load. Let's add a live load in this case, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this load have a start magnitude of 350 pounds a linear foot, end magnitude of 500 pounds a linear foot. But then I'm gonna start this load at the five foot location and, and have it increase all the way to the 15 foot location. So we can manipulate where we want these loads and, and the position of these. These loads could be vertical or horizontal if we wanted to. In this case, we're just gonna apply these dead and live loads um, on the uh, top of the wall. Finally, I'm gonna go ahead and add a point load. So let's say, let's add a vertical dead point load uh, with a magnitude maybe seven and a half kips. And let's add it at the 12 foot location along the wall. So again, we can go ahead and add all of this information. Now again, just like we saw before, if I click on any one of these loads, we're switching to those loads here. Uh, so that we can ma manipulate them just really quickly. Now, all along, as we've been adding dead and live load, our load combinations have been updating automatically as well. So we've been getting our load combinations, our serviceability and strength level combinations for the concrete wall and for the bearing pressure. We can go ahead and click this little gear here, and we could see the combinations that are being used, the safety factors that are going to be incorporated when we do sliding or overturning checks, also the region and the code that we're using. So we could choose to disable or enable any of these codes and uh, combinations if we want to. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is and click close. Now at this point, we've pretty much defined everything that we want in order to run a design. So I'm just going to go ahead very quickly and click solve. And now immediately we're presented with our detailed report. And we're also presented with our code check as well as the code check for the governing load combination. So in this case, our governing load combination is dead load plus our uh, soil load. Now, if we click the drop down here, we could go ahead and look at different load combinations if we want to. But in this case, we'll just keep dead load and the and the um, earth uh, lateral earth pressure as our confirming or controlling. If I go ahead and now expand this detail report, we can see our properties here. So just our defined properties, everything we defined in our uh, setup. <clears throat> we can see our description of loads, so our point loads and our live loads, our line loads. We can see our load combinations that were used, both strength and serviceability. We can see our load combinations. So if I can switch back, I really like this feature to be able to switch back and forth between uh, different combinations that we're looking at, different, get different loading diagrams. So you can see the passive and active pressure. You can see the vertical and horizontal pressures. You can see our bearing pressure in the beneath. So we can go ahead and click on all that. Also see diagrams. So force diagrams, moment, and shear diagrams. And then finally, we can start to look at our calculations. So this is really diving into the details of how the calculation is performed. So a few that I just wanna show off, obviously there's a ton of different calculations here, but a few that I think are really important. First and foremost, being able to see how the earth pressure is being calculated at any given location. So seeing those equations, so you see exactly how we're getting a vertical soil pressure at the heel, for instance, when that value is gonna come back up in our calculations, I think is really important. We can also see our steel results. 
So looking at our horizontal vertical steel details, so how is that information uh, being calculated, the AS provided versus what we need, um, and looking at the different information there. <clears throat> we also can look at our overturning and sliding checks. So if we go ahead and open up these overturning and sliding checks, again, step by step, seeing exactly how we're calculating overturning moment, comparing it to our safety factor. Again, same thing for sliding, comparing it to our, the, uh, its safety factor and the corresponding load combination. Finally, looking at our soil bearing check and our rebar diagram, seeing exactly what we ended up designing here. So the number of bars, the spacing of the bars uh, that are being designed. Now, once you've gone through this and you decide, okay, this wall is exactly as I want it, I can go ahead and download this report. Now, when I download, this is actually a batch download, so I can go ahead to choose to include only this retaining wall or multiple uh, of the other components in my uh, project here. I can also choose to include, include the specific print options that I want. So maybe I don't want the properties, the loads, the load combinations. I just want the calculations, or I just want the calculations and the properties, for instance. We can go ahead and choose to download whatever we want in that case. For more information about RISA Calc, including functionality and pricing, please visit RISA.com.